Amsters by Mr. Amster. Before you begin, please make sure that you have a sharpened pencil or pen and a highlighter. Key vocabulary. One of the new words for this unit is empire. An empire is a large territory where several groups of people are ruled by a single powerful leader or a government. Some of the ones we will cover this in this unit are the Akkadians, Babylonians, and the mighty Assyrians. Capital. A city that is the center of government. Some empires, like the Akkadians, had multiple capital cities. Tribute. When wealth is sent from one country or ruler to another as a sign that the other is superior. An older example in school would be like when you pay off somebody, a bully, to not beat you up. But of course we do not allow bullying, so this should never happen. Conquer, to gain control over someone or something. Invade, to enter as an enemy. Don't invade my personal space. Steal. A three-dimensional sculpture carved out of stone. Can you remember the first steel we talked about? If you remember the steely of Naran Sim and Shutruk Nahante, you're correct. Siege. A military blockade and attack on a city to force it to surrender. One of the best at this were the Assyrians, but we'll learn more about them a little bit later. An aqueduct, a pipe or channel that brings water from distant places. Yes, it is a form of irrigation. Bass relief, bas relief, or relief. You'll hear all three. It is a sculpture in which the image projects out from a flat surface. The Assyrians made some of the most beautiful bas reliefs. They were so detailed, it was very amazing to see. Astronomy, the study of stars and planets. Contrary to popular belief, Mr. Jones did not invent astronomy. It was actually invented by the Babylonians. Please don't tell him I said that. Sundial. A device for telling time using the sun. Please take a moment and highlight your vocabulary words. If you still need to write some in, because I've talked too fast, please do so now. The Akkadians. In 2300 BCE, the Akkadians conquered Mesopotamia. The last city-state to fall was Uruk.
being the first empire was really their greatest achievement. Their first and most influential ruler of the empire was Sargon. He was a strong king and a skilled general, and he had military tactics that were unlike anything the world had seen, and his army was large. They were famous for having these tight formations with the shields in the front and people with spears right behind them. They knocked down the walls of city-states, of all the city-states, to prevent a rebellion. And he made sure that all the local leaders were loyal to him. Because if they weren't, he'd get rid of them. Please take a moment and highlight all the, world, the words in bold. Life under the Akkadians. Sargon ruled for 56 years. I bet you guys have parents that are younger than that. And their capital city was Agade. It's near Babylon, but the thing is, we don't know where it is exactly is. It was never found. Most likely it was destroyed. Some think it was built on top of, of Babylon, but we may never know. Now they used the tribute from other city-states to build their empire. And it was a beautiful city, by all accounts. They used the Sumerian irrigation techniques, their writing, and the same gods, although they gave them different names. And eventually, with writing, they came up with their own language. And, as I said, the Akkadian language eventually replaced cuneiform. One of their favorite objects, or most famous, was the steel, was a steel, and the steel, steel of Naran Sim, who was the grandson of Sargon. Remember this guy? And it was also known as the victory steel. Does anybody remember who stole it? If you said Shutruknahante, you're correct, and you should probably write that in. Now, Sargon wanted the empire to last for a thousand years. But it was a large territory and was difficult to rule. And the, his ancestors were only able to hold on to it for another 150 years. Too bad. Now, please take a moment and highlight everything that was in bold. Now what you should notice, and this is when you're looking at your map, is that we're slowly going north, because the next ones we're going to talk about are the Babylonians. Whoever is the most north on the waterways controls it, and thus controls the city-states below it. So let's continue to move north, and let's talk about the Babylonians. The Babylonian Empire. It began as a small city-state at the start of the 18th century, BCE. And the capital city was Babylon, and it's right at the closest part between the Tigris and the Euphrates. Look at your map if you're unsure, and it's in the southern half of Mesopotamia. Now, their famous leader was Hammurabi. You'll like him. We're going to spend a, a, a couple of days talking about this guy. He was famous for many things. His conquest of Mesopotamia was aided by being the center of, tra of a trading network and having an effective agricultural system. Remember, he's controlling both the Tigris and the Euphrates if you look at where his city-state is located. So he can control both of them. Advantage Mesopotamia, advantage Babylon. And it stretched into Asia Minor. Now, because of his massive agricultural system, he was able to add grain and woven cloth. 
And this gave him the ability to get wood, gold, silver, precious gems, and livestock from other places around the world. The supreme god of the Babylonians was Marduk. And we'll learn about him a little bit later on. They built roads throughout the empire and created the first postal service. And eventually AOL will take that and say, you've got mail. And you can now say, thanks Babylonians. Now learning to them was very important. They developed a system of mathematics, specifically the ability to find area. Somewhere Miss Gallagher's smiling that you're talking about mathematics. Now, what makes them unique is that slaves could own their own land and even buy their freedom. Women had rights too in Babylon, and although the fathers chose their husbands, they could own property and even keep money of their own. Eventually, though, the Babylonians were conquered in the early 1500s. Does anyone know who conquered them? If you said the Assyrians, you're correct. Please take a moment and highlight all of the words that are in bold. and highlight Mesopotamia so you know where the southern comes from. And let's hide, highlight Marduk. And women, please. Conquered. If you still need to finish that up, pause here, and we're on to our last slide. The Codes of Hammurabi. I told you he's a fun guy, and this is the greatest contribution of the Babylonians. They were written from about 1792 to 1750 BCE. There are over two, well, there are about 282 different codes, and the first, and they're the first code of laws to apply to everyone. And yes, different social classes were treated differently, but slaves had rights and everybody had to follow the rules of law within their so own social structure. These codes helped unify the empire and preserve order. Why? Because it's from the government. The government made these laws and the people followed them. Now, these goads were based on the god Marduk's will, and they did not change. And they're based on a concept of an eye for an eye, and they're very detailed. Does anyone know what an eye for an eye means? It means that whatever you do, the same can be done to you in return. If you steal something, that person has the ability to take your hand because you used your hand to steal something from them. Obviously, the extreme is if you kill somebody, you are killed in return. Please take a moment and highlight everything that is in bold. But highlight all of this one. 282 different codes. Thank you for being patient through all of this. The end.